Now, solving these two equations, what do you find to be the value of x? Mm -mm. What, what did you say, Mr. Forbes? Are you aware, Roger, that we are supposed to be having an algebra lesson? Right. Come in. Begging your pardon, Master Roger, but I thought you'd like to hear the news. Let's get on with the lesson. What news? The master is going to America. Going to America? They're practically on the boat, sir. Well, I'm going to tell Wilkie. Roger, Roger, what about X? Uh, excuse me, sir. Mr. Wilkins! Huh? Now look what you've been and gone and made me do. I'm sorry, Mr. Wilkins, really I am. But I just had to come and tell you the news. What news? What's happened? Oh, nothing very much. Just that we're going to America. To America? Yes, for the cup. Are you sure? We're practically on the boat. Isn't it spifflicating? <laughs> You've hit the nail on the ear. That's just what it is. Spifflicating. <laughs> Here, I, where are you off to? I've got to tell the pooker. Um. <laughs> pooker! Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt your lunch, pooker, but I just had to come and tell you the news. Do you know what it is? We're all going to America, pooker. What do you think of that? <laughs> Wilkins is here to see you, sir. Walk off, but it's send him in. Yes, sir. Ah. Well, Wilkins, what brings you here? I hope you'll forgive me, sir, but I had to come and tell you how happy I feel about it all. What do you mean? You know, sir, I've never had such a nankering to get to America before. Just to watch the pooker out in front with that cup between his teeth. It's like... It's like an answer to a prayer. Uh, if you'll excuse the liberty, sir. I'm very sorry, Wilkins, but I'm afraid I can't take you with me this year. You mean you, you don't want me to go? No, no, I'm sorry, Wilkins. I know it'll be a great disappointment to you. Well, it's the financial side. We've just got to do without you, that's all. Very good, sir. Grandfather? You're not going to leave Wilkins behind when we go to America, are you? I'm afraid so. But you don't understand. It's what he's been working for. Why, it'll break his heart if he doesn't go. Now, Besides, now look here, Roger. I want Wilkins to go just as much as you do. If there was any way to do it, I'd take him. But it just can't be done. Now, be a good chap to say nothing more about it. But, Grandfather... Now, that's enough, Roger. Wilkins cannot go with us to America. Stop this here racket. <laughs> now, Pooker, I've been almost like a brother to you, haven't I? You're going to get me into awful trouble. I'm not supposed to be here, you see. I practically mortgaged my soul to get the money to do it. I even had to borrow a sovereign from young Master Roger. You wouldn't go back on Master Roger, would you, Pooker? <laughs> Wilkins, you on board? What the blazes do you mean by this? Well? What excuse is this time? Well, if you'll permit me, sir, I think it's a kind of a, a sort of a <laughs> inspiration, sir. Oh. Well, young man, the truth. I think I see your hand in this. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's 
stout lad. Spooky me laid. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> Clients, ain't you? Excuse me, sir. I just can't seem to get used to you big town guys. Ah, why don't you go to night school? How much do I owe you? One buck even. A buck? Why, for a buck and a half, I can buy two of these wagons loaded with hay, too. Oh, give us a dough, will you? Look at I'll match you. Two bucks enough. Come on, give us a buck. I'm no big shot jockey. I got a wife and two kids to support. Here's an extra lease. Buy your kids a rattle and go home and play with them. Thank you, sir. How do they look today, Timmy? How do they always look when I ride them? Like money from home. Anything special today? Let your shirt on the plug I ride in the third race. It's in a bag. Oh, thanks, Timmy. Ride it on ice. That's the cluckiest guy on the track. And the funny part of it is, he's plenty good. In the aisle, please. It's nice of you to pose for the boys, Sir Peter. Yeah, I hope they haven't bothered you too much. Not at all. We're all glad to have you back. We hope you'll be more successful this time. <laughs> so do we. I suppose you're comfortably located? Taking the cottage near the track here. Don't forget, anything you need, we're at your service. Very nice of you. Thank you. And you, young man? How do you like America? Tremendously, sir. It's every bit as exciting as I thought it would be. I beg your pardon? Sign there. Sign this? Sure, what do you think? Sign your name. You're a movie star, ain't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, you're not? Aren't you anybody at all? What the young lady wants is your autograph. Uh, this is Roger Calverton. I think he's important enough for your little book. Who said so? If he ain't a movie star, he ain't nobody. Oh. Attention, please. Here is a program correction. Blasting number eight will be written by jockey Timmy Donovan. Donovan on blasting. That's all I wanted to know. I always bet on Donovan. And that's why I ride. Number eight. Oh, there he is. Oh, look, Grandfather. He does sit his horse well, doesn't he? Who do you mean, Roger? The jockey on number eight. Donovan, I think his name is. That's right, Timmy Donovan. Is he an especially good jockey? He's one of our greatest. He's ridden some of the best horses in the country. Uh, he's a good rider, all right. But he gives us more trouble than any boy in the profession. He's what we call in this country a swell head. Oh. They're right up there now. We might get a break any second. No, there's a horse breaking through its number eight flat. But he's really handling that horse awfully well. Your friend Donovan seems to have gone to sleep, Roger. Easy, you plug. You want to run yourself into the ground? See, Grandfather, he has his mount under wraps. Watch him. He'll race his horse off the pace until he reaches the far turn. I'm sure that's his method. Oh. Down in that spill. He's a great writer. He is, Grandfather. Hold 
your permutual stickers, please? Hey, what kind of a rat are you? You might have killed that kid. Yeah, what's it to you? I'll tell you what's it to me. If you ever try to squeeze on me, I'll bury this bat in your neck. Yeah. Grandfather, why couldn't we get Mr. Donovan to ride the poker in the cup? From what Mr. Sloan says, our stable caps would hardly fit him. Too small for the lad's head, eh? <laughs> but if you discussed the matter with him, made him see quite clearly. Why don't you talk to him? I think I will. Good luck, son. Data board, our official. Number eight, Blasting, was the winner. Number seven, Skibor, was second. Number three, Skipton, was third. And number four, Honey Lamb, was fourth. Time of a mile, one minute and 38 and four fifths seconds. Donovan, I thought I told you to get out in front and stay there. You won the race, didn't you? What do you care how I did it? If you can boot him home any better, you ride him. Let go of my arm. Say, hey, Timmy, Jones wants you to ride his horse in the last race. It's 25 bucks in it. Nothing doing. From now on, it's 40 bucks enough. And I ain't riding no Beatles. Hey, you know what's going to happen to you, don't you, Timmy? If you go strutting around here like you was the only rider in the world? I know what's going to happen to me as long as I keep booting them in home. I'm going to ride, they're going to pay me for it. And if you can't get the dough I want, there's plenty of agents around. I beg your pardon, Mr. Donovan. Out of my way, Gunsel. Maybe I don't even need an agent. Maybe you don't, wise guy. All right, from now on, you're out. I'll get my own mounts. You know where you're going to wind up, wise and hymen. Uh, Mr. Donovan, could I have a minute, please? You don't think you get to talk to big shots like that, do you? Write him a letter. But it's quite important, and I must see him immediately. Listen, kid, you just don't go to see guys like that. you got to sneak up on them when they're not looking. But don't you know he's the greatest race rider of all times? If you don't believe it, ask him. But nobody's admitted into the jockey room, and I must see him. Why don't you try to catch him with Mother Ralph's? Who's Mother Ralph? She's an old dame that runs a boarding house for jockeys. Down that road in the first tent to the left. Go ahead and ring, ring. Wear yourself out ringing a plate. You wish to fall on her bowl. Well, what do you want? How do you do? May I see Mr. Timothy Donovan, please? You can see him as far as I'm concerned, but he ain't in. If you want to come in, wait for him, then that's your problem. Thank you. Don't thank me. I just work here. Set yourself down over there. Dinner will be ready in 20 minutes, so he'll be back in 15, if you don't mind waiting a half an hour. Say, your name ain't Herman, is it? No, it's Roger. Oh, well, I thought maybe it was Herman. You look like a Herman. Some people look like Hermans and some don't. At least that's what I think, but then why should you care what I think? Make yourself at home. Got a pair of new shoes, polished up and paid for. Honey, they were made for going to town. Got a pair of new shoes, pretty pat. Who are you? I beg your pardon. I came to see Mr. Donovan and I heard you singing. I, I don't suppose I should have intruded, but I'm sure you were playing Chopin. And I wondered, uh, was that, uh, was that last thing something of his too? You're English, aren't you? Yes, my name is Roger Calverton. Mine's Cricket West. How do you do? Say, don't your knees get cold? Huh? Um, well, uh, well, no, they don't seem to. Uh, you play the piano awfully well, don't you? Well, I ought to. Aunt Edie pays three dollars a piece for my lessons. Of course, what you heard wasn't really my best. I'm going to be a great singer. And I'm going to be a great actress, too. Are you really? Yes. Oh, yes. What else can one do down here? There is something... something inside of me that says... that says... Oh, well. Why am I telling you all this? Huh? You would not know. You would not care. But when there is a strange yearning in one's soul for the beautiful beyond, I think Von should go. Don't you? Well, no, I... No, 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 no. Don't talk. Don't speak. Don't say anything. Just... just let us sit here for this one moment and be 
uh, efficient unto ourselves. Uh, isn't the word sufficient? There you go, interrupting me. How can I concentrate? I'm going mad. Mad! Mad! Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. That's all right. Say, would you like to hear this Sadie Swagger? I'll swing it for you. You'll swing nothing of the sort. You get at that piano. Who is this? Uh, this is Mr. Calverton, Aunt Edie. Sorry, Mr. Calverton. There isn't a room in the house. Oh, Aunt Edie, he isn't a jockey. He's a... he's an Englishman. You know, Sir Peter. Sir Peter Calverton? S are you... Sir? I'm Roger, his grandson. Well... I called to see Mr. Donovan, the swellhead. Cricket, how many times have I told you not to talk that way? Timmy's a fine jockey. Well, the way he shows off, you'd think he invented horses. Mr. Donovan is rather abrupt, but I admire his ability. I'd like to meet him. Well, uh, why don't you stay for dinner? Can he, Aunt Edie? He can, if he's fast for the fall. Oh, but I am. You'd better be, or you'd lose an arm. You see, eight starving jockeys play no favorite. I'll set a place for you, Mr. Calverton. Excuse me. I like your aunt, Miss Cricket, and I'm glad you invited me to dinner. Oh, well, we're charmed to have you. It might be rather novel to eat with jockeys, eh, what? Yes, I'm sure I'll enjoy it. Yes, they're so amusing, so, uh, uh, platonic. <laughs> Well, what's the matter? I say, is the house a fire? No, that's a dinner bell. That means come and get it. Oh, well, shall we? Oh, dear, yes. I'm simply famished, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Here's one you oh, 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 I hope they ain't got school again. Well, bring on the food. Let me off. You know what the old lady said. They must be hungry. Yes. Jockeys are like that. Shall we go in? I do hope you like our grub. Grub? Did I say grub? Oh, I meant, uh, grube. A la jacquet. Oh, yes, yes. Boys, this is Mr. Calverton. I'd like to meet Dick Reed, Tubby Wells, Hootmeyer, and Bones Conley. Hey, lay it on his back and see if it closes its eyes and says, you wouldn't be any relation to Charlie off the pickle yet, would you? They're nice boys when you get to know them. How do you do, gentlemen? Oh, I how do you do? Oh, 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 oh. And this is Boots McGuire, Mr. Calvert. Hiya. Hey, Ma, I'm hungry. I, uh, I think you'd better sit here, Mr. Calvert, near the door. I've looked forward to meeting you, gentlemen. I'm acquainted with several jockeys at home, and I know them to be very good sports. Hey, Jerry. Pull yourself together. You're about to meet the Prince of Wales. Yeah? This is Mr. Roger Calverton, Jerry Andrews. How do you do, Mr. Andrews? Wipe right off your chin. And this is Ozzie Platt. Pull down your vest. Pull down your vest. Why? Why, I don't believe I'm wearing a vest, Mr. Platt. What? Oh, 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 Stop reaching. Stop reaching for things until I get it on the table. And remember, boys, we have a guest for dinner. Cricket, you better eat with the boys tonight and watch their diet. Sit right there next to Mr. Calvin. Throw me over a hunk of hey, meat. Hey, get the potatoes going. No potatoes, Tubby. Order. Didn't I tell you we have a guest for dinner? Yeah, so what? Well, where are your manners? Mr. Calvin will be served first. May I have your plate? Well, I don't mind being served in turn, Mrs. Ralph. I think we'll do it in the proper way. Yeah, sure, do it in the proper way and we'll get ours about next Tuesday, huh? Yeah, what is this anyway? Shut up and try to act less like Indians. There you are, Mr. Calvin. Mm. We hope you'll enjoy it. Thank you very much. I'm sure I shall. Yeah, we hope you enjoy it, too. Would you mind, Miss Cricket? Huh? Oh. Oh! Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> if you don't mind, Mrs. Ralph, I'd rather be served in turn. <laughs> All right. And remember, you young hyenas, you have a guest for dinner. Yes, and a charming little chap, isn't he? <laughs> Cricket, <laughs> only one slice of meat apiece. There it is. I hear you're having your horse and cap race, eh? What, Mr. Calvert? Hey, you guys, leave me a hug on me. Ow! You heard what Aunt Edie said. Oh, I'm not very hungry if you'd rather have this. Yeah, sure, thanks, Butch. Here. Hey, get those spuds going, will you? Did someone inquire about what Grandfather intends to do in the American Cup? Says which? What do you call this? How do you do, Mr. Donovan? I was afraid you weren't coming to dinner. That's so. Sit there. You stay right where you are, Mr. Calvin. What's the idea? Don't I always sit there? That's my seat, ain't it? 
Aunt Edie told Mr. Calverton to sit there. Oh, yeah? I don't mind sitting there, Mr. Donovan, if you prefer this chair. Yeah, sit down. Start the food down this way. Come on, pass some of that meat. Don't put a couple of slices on there for me, will you? I want to get here on time like everybody else. What did I just say? Give me some potatoes and shove over the butter. Plenty of it. Butter, gee. Yeah, butter. I can have all I want. Because I don't ride no horse that ain't handicapped 112 or over. I ain't like the rest of you gunsels, because I'm good, see? Who let you in, English? Well, Mrs. Ralph invited me to dinner, but I came here to see you. Me? What about? Well, Grandfather wanted me to ask you if you'd consider riding the poker in the American Cup. The what? Pokey, did he say? No, he said poker. You know, pokered any horse on the track. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll find, sir, the poker will prove his ability on the day of the race. If you don't like his name, I'm sure you will admire the way he runs. Let that be a lesson to you. Puka, why did you pick up a handle like that? Off a tomato can? <laughs> Puka was named after a coal black stallion and an old Irish legend. You wouldn't kid me, would you? No, I'm quite serious. He was the finest and most beautiful horse that ever lived. It was said he could clear the width of Ireland in two jumps. Hmm, fancy that. That's what I call a good horse, huh? Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Scale heavy that bread down there, will you? The heel. Am I to understand, Mr. Donovan, that you would not consider riding the Puka? No beetles. Have you ever seen the Puka run, Mr. Donovan? No, oh, who wants to see him run? You bring some of them cheap nags over here to America every year, and what do you win? Epis. Why don't you stay home where you belong? Oh, well, that makes it quite plain that I'm not wanted here. Will you explain to Mrs. Ralph that I had to go, and tell her, please, that I thank her very much for her invitation to dinner? If you will excuse me, gentlemen. Can't take it, huh? You gonna go home and cry on your grandpappy's shoulder? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Donovan, I should like very much the opportunity of punching you in the eye. What was that? Why, I'll no, mess no, 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 that two little Stop, stop, Out of my way. Think you're a tough guy, eh? Oh, I'm sorry, Roger. You are probably a much better fighter than I am, Mr. Donovan. Therefore, it would be foolish of me to engage in a fight with you. However, I hope you know exactly what I think of you and your kind. You are the... You are the... Oh, well, wait, Mr. Carleton, please! Aren't you proud of yourself, Timmy Donovan? He was too much of a gentleman to tell you what he thought of you. You're a... You're a gutter snipe. Now, come on, let's see you take a sock at me. Oh, cut it I out, I won't cut it out, and I'm going to tell Andy to every single thing that happened unless you go after him and apologize. What are you trying to do, make a slob out of a guy? That's just what you are now. There's not one thing that looks like a man about you, not one single decent thing. If there was, you'd go after him and apologize and bring him back. Well, maybe I'm a sucker for doing it. Go on, kiss and make up, Timmy. Yeah, well, suppose I kiss you with this. Meow, meow. Just let me hear one more crack out of you guys, that's all. Just one more. I slugged you a little too hard. Hey, did you hear what I said? I said, I'm sorry I slugged you. If you're apologizing, it isn't at all necessary. I shall proceed to take boxing lessons immediately and shall slug you at the first opportunity. That's all right. Cricket said to bring you home, Norn. You gotta come. I don't intend to go back and kindly let go of my arm. Hey, listen. You think I want them dames crawling all over me? Oh. So that's the way it is, huh? You had your chance, why didn't you take it? I would have been taking an unfair advantage. Raise your hands, please. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. What are we fighting about? Well, I really can't remember at the moment. It seemed pretty important, though. Well, let's forget about it. Come on, you go back to the house with me. You can come back with me if you like, but I won't go back with you. Oh, yes, you will. Oh, no, I won't. Oh, yes, you will. Oh, no, I won't. Oh, yes, you will. Oh, no, I won't. Oh, yes, you will. Oh, I won't. Oh, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Listen, can't we settle this by tossing a coin? Would be, would be a lot less wearing on one. All right. Heads. Tails.
Are we intruding, Grandfather? No, no. This is Mr. Donovan. Oh? I don't want you to think I come because I wanted to. It's just because he won. Uh, it looks to me as if you'd both lost. You see, Grandfather, we tossed a coin. Yeah, you tossed it pretty hard, eh? <laughs> it bounced right back, eh? <laughs> anyway, this is Mr. Donovan, Grandfather, and this is my grandfather. Well? Well, I want to tell you one thing. I'm going to ride your old pokey for you. The name is Pooka. Well, what ever gave you that idea? Well, he was telling me all about it while I was eating. I told him no then, and my answer still sticks. Well, I'm afraid you took my grandson. A little too seriously. But, Grandpa... Yes, of course. It was just one of our English jokes that you Americans fail to understand. Joke, eh? Huh? Well, we couldn't take the first jockey that came along with a little bit of talent, could we? Talent? Well, you know who I am. I'm Donovan. When I ride them, they win. Yes, 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 of course. And if you improve, you'll get your chance one day. Yes, you can't start at the top, you know, Mr. Donovan. Start at the top? Well... Uh... In a word, we want to find a particular kind of jockey. I suppose you've never heard of Garrison. Snapper Garrison? Mm hmm. He rode for me years ago. Had a marvelous knack of coming through from behind. Nobody could touch him at it. Snapper Garrison rode for you? For years. <laughs> is he one of your heroes? Why, I'll say he is. Well, I think this might interest you. I rode it along with some old effects that I held on to for sentimental reasons. I don't know why I brought it with me, but there it is. Now, that belonged to Garrison. He sent it to me just after he'd retired. Snapper Garrison? What do you know about that? Gee, boy, I'll bet he boot home many a winner with that, huh? He knew how to ride. I'll say he did. Would you like to have it, Timmy? But, but I like... Well, you wouldn't give away a thing like this, would you? No, I'll be giving it into good hands, shouldn't I? Gosh, I, I wouldn't let a soul touch it. Ain't there something I could do for you? For you two guys? Oh, I wish no you could. No thing, thank you. I, I ain't no snapper garrison. Oh, no, of course not. But... No, we understand that thoroughly. All right, so I ain't no snapper garrison. But I can ride better than the best of them. My style's like garrison. People say it is. And if you want to see that pokey fellow of yours... It's Pooker, the Pooker. All right, Pooker. But if you want to see how a horse like that's got to be handled, well, I'm the boy that can turn a trick. But are you suggesting that you... Uh, ah, this is Mr. Wilkins, Timmy. Timmy Donovan, Wilkins. Donovan? Why, of course I've seen you ride, me lad. And a very neat job you make of it, too. You know, Sir Peter, I've only seen a finish like his once before, and that was when Snapper Garrison was in his prime. What'd you say? Did you hear what he said? You really think there's a similarity, eh? Exactly the same technique. If I know one jockey from another. Do you think we dare take a chance, Roger? Take a chance? Where do you get that stuff? It's rather a desperate gamble. You put me up on him once and I'll show you. Changes all our plans, eh, son? It's most upsetting. See here, you got a horse named Pope. The Pooka! You want to see him win that race? Well, he needs trick handling with these mugs around here. That garrison stuff. You don't need to look no further. I'm your man. And with Snapper's crop in my fist, well, what do you think? You really want to know? We think you're terrific. Sensational. And it's Oak? That's how it sounds to me, Mr. Donovan. Hey, you think you've seen me ride. Wait till you see me in the cup. I'll be so far ahead at the finish, you'll think I've been trailing the last race. <laughs> okay? Okay. 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 And thank you, Jimmy. Oh, that's all right. See, I got a scram now. And uh, thanks again for this, Your Honor. Uh, glad to meet you. I'll show up in the morning if you want me to and give you a workout. Your horse, I mean. Good enough, old chap. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Timmy, I'll see you to the door. Say, you know, this is the best present I ever had. This is great. He's a swell old guy, ain't he? I'm glad you like him, Timmy. He has to win that cup. I'll win it for him. I'm sure you will. I wish I could learn to ride like you. There ain't nothing to it. It's just like riding a bicycle, except you don't pedal. Oh, I can ride all right. I meant I'd like to be a jockey and learn the tricks. Wouldn't you teach me? Say, what's the matter with you? Race riding's a tough racket. You gotta be a tomato to make the grade. Are you a tomato? Tomato! What'd you think I was, a gentleman? I'll bet you think I am at that, don't you? Why, I'm sure of it. What are you trying to do, kid somebody? I ain't even got an education. But education isn't the thing that makes a gentleman, Timmy. Oh, that's too deep for me. Skip it. I'll see you tomorrow, maybe. Say, listen, why don't you run that plug of yours in some sort of a prep race before the cup? I don't know. Do you think we should? The Ridgemore Handicap would set him right on edge. Yes, I see. It's not a bad idea. I'll see you tomorrow, kid. And you will teach me. What, how to do race riding? How to be a tomato. Good night, kid. Good night.
Higher up on his withers. Watch the turn, easy now. It seems that Grandfather decided to enter the Pooker in the Ridgemore Handicap. Oh, you don't say. What gave him that idea? Oh, I suggested it. Oh, you did, did you? I thought it a good idea for you to get the feel of the horse before the big race. I don't need to get the feel of no horse. When was all this decided? Oh, it was that night after I gave you the black eye. You gave me the black eye? What about the one I gave you? We're both watching you. How are you coming, me boy? Fine, Mr. Wilkins. There's really very little to it. See you later. Hey, what you doing? Are you hurt, Tomato? No, a little sore. Come on, I'll fix you up. I think that's enough. What do you mean it's enough? I just got started. After the oil, we give you the algae. And hold still. I am holding still. What were you saying about the Grand Street Theater? Hey, there's a swell who done it down there tonight. What's a who done it? You know, one of them murder mysteries. Nobody knows who done it. Who is it? Me? Ah, uh, stay out. Well, can I come in for just a minute? No, we're busy. Do let's go to the cinema. The what? You know, the, the movies. Oh. I'll get some money from Grandfather. Oh, no, you don't. None of that. Who bought the tickets when we went to the softball game? You did. Who bought the tickets when we went to the automobile races? You did. What are you trying to do, give somebody the runaround? I'm buying tonight. Very well. We'll have dinner at our place first. And we don't do that either. I've been practically living at your joint. Tonight, we eat on me. I'm going to take you to a little spot tonight where we can get a T-bone steak as big as the side of a cow for a buck. Now comes the alky. A box fighter once told me about this. Great stuff. Tomorrow, you won't even know it was hurt. You've learned a lot of things, haven't you, Timmy? I mean, uh, useful things. Yeah, I've learned a lot of things, all right. Things like learning how to rub liniment on a stiff leg, only I can't spell a word with over four letters in it. I'm a smart guy, all right. And when you were talking about algebra the other day, what did I think it was? One of them horses with stripes on it. Oh, you mean a zebra? <laughs> yeah, I certainly am wised up, ain't I? Yeah, I know a lot of things. But I'm gonna know something. As soon as I get some dough, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go out and hire me one of those guys like you were telling me about, you know, a, a tutor. And I'm going to learn how to spell every word there is. All except stable, stalls, and paddock. Them I don't even want to learn how to spell. I spent my money today on something that I had. Ah, no, you don't. What's the idea? I ain't through yet. Just Isn't like that Miss West singing? So what? That dame's always showing off. I on. feel like one of the smart set. I didn't buy pearls like other girls. I didn't buy diamond rings. I didn't buy clothes or fancy holes. Canary bird that sings, but I got a pair of new shoes, polished up and paid for. Honey, they were made for going to town. Got a pair of new shoes, pretty patent leather. Got to get together, going to What you gonna do with a dame like that, huh? Well, I just wanted to show you my new shoes. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Calvin? I didn't know you were in here. No, why, of course you didn't. That's cute talk, all right. I'll bet you two bits to a dime in a minute she makes a crack about a good picture playing at the Grand Street tonight. Oh, is there? Oh, isn't that lovely? I'd love to see it, wouldn't you, Mr. Calvin? 
Timmy and I had planned But to we go. ain't packing no dames along. Oh, Timmy, you're so nice. But I've often wondered, isn't a horse ever going to fall on you? I'm sure that Miss West won't be any trouble. Oh, Timmy, I wouldn't bother you for worlds. Yeah? Telegram for Timmy Donovan. Hope the news ain't too bad. For me, who'd send me a telegram? Well, don't blame me for it. I never get no telegrams. So when I do, it's always bad news. Or at least that's what my aunt says. She got one one time. Who do you think was from? Her son asked him for money. <laughs> I'll bet you sent it to yourself. That's all? Oh, I'm not interested. Oh, don't be funny, Timmy. It's probably something very important. It's probably some guy wanting me to write a beetle for him, most likely. <laughs> He can't even read. Who can't? I was trying to be funny, ain't you? No, I'm not going. What do you mean? What's it say? Well, that's from my old man. He wants to see me. He says he's sick. It's a lot of hooey. Well, how do you know? Maybe he is sick. Yeah, sure. All these years, he didn't even know I was alive. But now it's different. He can use me now, maybe. Sure. What's he done for me? Nothing. If your father needs you, Timmy. So I've been sick, too. Did he know anything about it? Did he try to do anything for me? No. I ain't going, do you hear? I ain't going. What's all this fussing about? You're not going where? Well, Timmy's father sent for him. He's sick, and he doesn't think it's important enough to go. If your father wants you and he's sick, you've got to go, son. Timmy, no matter what he's done, he's your father. Why don't you leave me alone? What do you know about it? Suppose he was your old man, and suppose he ran out on you when you were a little guy and couldn't take care of yourself. You had to eat any place you could pick it up and sleep in stables. Maybe you'd go to him. Yes, Timmy, I think I would. Ah, like you know about it. No, I'm not going. Come in. Well, what do you want? Sit down, son. I'd just as soon stand. I guess you hate me, don't you, kid? What do you want? Listen to me. The doctor says I've got one chance in a million. There's a Chicago specialist, a, a Dr. Jorgens, could get me an iron lung and maybe pull me through, but, but I'm broke. Could you help me, son? I ain't got no money. No, but I know how you could get some. I ain't riding any crooked races. Well, you'd give me my life, kid. And look, I swear I'd never bother you again. I'd go away somewhere and, and never ask you for another thing as long as I live, if you'd just do this one thing for me. I'm supposed to be a good rider. People bet their money on me. Little guys that can't afford to lose. I win for them. I like to win for them. I don't pull any races. Yeah, but this one race can't make any difference. Listen to me. I know people who'd pay five grand if the horse you're going to ride in the Ridgemore didn't win. The Ridgemore. So that's the race, huh? And you'd think I'd let down a white guy like his honor, Sir Peter, huh? But, Timmy... Th Listen, I'll give you the break you ain't got coming to you. You want some money? Well, I'll tell you how to get it. You get all your buddies together and tell them to bet every nickel they can raise on the Puka to win the Ridgemore. No one enough to take care of you. And that'd be swell, kid, but, but the Puka's gonna be an odds-on favorite. The price is too short. The boys can't risk their money on that kind of a play. Yeah, well, then you're out of luck. Oh, wait a minute, kid. You don't believe me, do you? Good evening. Oh, I didn't know you had company. Oh, this is my boy, Dr. Timmy Donovan. How are you, young man? Your father's been asking for you, so I sent you that telegram. Yeah? I thought you ought to know that, uh, I mean... It's all right, Doc. I know I ain't got a chance. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Donovan. There's always a chance, you know. Of course, it's a slim one. No, there ain't any chance. There was one, but... I lost it. I thought maybe Timmy'd come to the front for me, but he don't seem to want to. Oh, that's how it is, eh? Timmy? I don't know anything about this quarrel with your father, but because of him you are here and you owe him something. You can't just stand by and let a man die without doing something about it, without trying to help him. That's murder. I ain't throwing no races for nobody. Down. 
up or down? How long did you say it would take to get that specialist here from Chicago? We can get him here in 24 hours. Okay, Dad. You get your iron lung. The puka won't win. Thanks, son. I'll never forget you for this. It worked? Okay. Now, there's the phone. Line up your agents. Get Chicago, New Orleans, Boston, St. Louis, New York. All of them. It's hop skit to win the Ridgemore. Come on, step on it. <laughs> I'll get them for you. Some doc. <laughs> Come, Cricket, come, dear. Madam, you've got a ticket. If I haven't, then 42 washes ahead of you certainly have been fooled. Here we are, dear. I'm sorry, madam, but this box is private. It's all right, I'll keep it a secret. I am very good at that. But, madam, this box is reserved. You can't sit here. Just a minute, what's your name? Jim. Listen, Jim, you're a nice, good-looking sort of a kid, and I like you very much. I bet you're good to your mother. Your friends love you. But will you stop annoying me? Sit down, darling. Listen here, lady, I'm the usher. Well, go on and ush. Some people are so depressing. Ah, Timmy. Feeling all right? Yes, sir. Well, I needn't give you any instructions. You know how to write him. Yes, sir. Only one thing. Don't wait too long before you make your move. Remember, he's not a super horse. Right, boy? Yes, sir. And will you do me a favor? Carry that along with you. It's a little superstition of mine. May bring us a bit of luck. Why don't you lay off me? But I just wanted to say I waited for you at Mother Ralph's last night and you didn't come home. What do you keep following me around for? I'm riding your horse for you, ain't I? Ain't that enough? Go on, beat it. But there isn't anything the matter, is there? Have I done something to offend you? Well, I don't want to mess around with you, see? Don't come near me. Don't bother me. Beat it! Hold on there, son. Where do you think you're going? I've got to give this to Timmy. Can't be done now, kid. Oh. Step. The horses are on the track and parading to the post. Come on now, lady. We're asking you to leave in a nice way. When I leave, it won't be in any nice way. Please, lady, don't force me to pinch you. I'd love it. Yes, 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 yes. What's the meaning of all this? I think there's been a misunderstanding, Grandfather. Mrs. Ralph and Miss West are our guests. Eh? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess maybe I, I made a mistake. Say, Jim. Come here. You know, you're the wooden image of Charlie McCarthy. Hey, look, everybody. They're right at the post. They're all in there quietly now. It looks like a break any no, minute no. now. In the Here we go. Ah! Oh, What's the matter with Timmy Doc? He's asleep at the post. A very bad start, but he's after. Is running last. Sure, it's another grandstand finish for Donovan. Back stretch, it's still cream sliced by half a length, Featherton second by a half. Hop skid running third by one in cross time. The other three racing even to the poop. Shouldn't he be making his move? He should have made it by now. Oh, it's still cream sliced in front, but now. Say that, team. We're just out for the ride. Right, he gets the leader. Now it's hop skid. Wake up, low. wake up, come along. Donovan, gentlemen. Does Donovan seem to be asking anything of that horse? Not to me. Still, he appears to be using the whip. There comes the puka now, moving up the oh, 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 oh. He's going on. I knew it. Oh. Something happened. Sure, something happened. Donovan grandstanded once too often. 
wise guy. Oh, he could have made it in a few more jumps. But it wasn't Timmy's fault, I'm sure of that. But the next time, I'm sure that he'll... Grandfather! What's the matter, Sir Peter? Grandfather, don't you hear me? Don't stand around there. Call a doctor. Somebody call a doctor. Talk to me, Grandfather. Grandfather, please talk to me. Please. It's Roger. Don't you hear? Oh, won't somebody do something? Get it down here. Let me through here, please. Timmy! Judge Dobson wants to see you. Sir? We don't like the ride you gave the Puka Donovan. What was the matter with it? You deliberately held that horse back until it was too late to make a move. Who did? I rated him just as I was told to. You saw me go to the whip coming into the stretch, didn't you? Can I help it if the horse didn't have nothing left? It ain't my fault if he can't run, is it? Understand, Donovan, we're giving you a warning. Yes. Who? Sir Peter Calverton. A heart attack, you think? Well, contact the hospital and keep us informed. That's all, Donovan. But remember, no more rides like that one. What's that about Sir Peter Calverton? They don't know. They're taking him to the general hospital. Suddenly collapsed at the finish of the race. Mm, that's too bad. Get back. Get back there. Stand back. General Hospital. Yes? I'll give you the fourth floor. Uh, pardon me, Miss. Information. You... Yes, Dr. Jones, I'll tell him. You want something? Uh, could you tell me if, uh, if his honor's okay? His honor? You know, Sir Peter. Oh, Sir Peter Calverton? Yes, ma'am. Oh, General Hospital. Who? Miss Jenny McCarthy? One moment, please. Are you a relative to Sir Peter Calverton? No, I'm just a friend of his. Why do you ask me that? He, he ain't... Timmy! Timmy! I wonder what has happened to that little devil who hasn't shown up for days. I can't understand it. Don't worry, he won't show up. The way he rode the pookie, he should never come back. How do you do? Well, for cat's sake, but it ain't Herman. Oh, that's right, you ain't her, Herman. Well, who do you want to see this time? Who's that? If you're asking me, I'd say it was a young fella calling on a young girl. But they don't usually ask me, or do they? I ain't supposed to know nothing around here, but I know more than they think I do. What do you suppose I got ears for? Oh, hello. How do you do? I thought I'd drop around and tell you. Yes, I know. You came to say goodbye. How did you know? It's in the paper about you selling your horse. I, I suppose you'll be going back to England. I'll have to. After I've sold the pooka, there'll be nothing to hold me here. I'd like to go to England. Maybe I will someday with the show. If you do, would you come and visit us? Me, I mean. Would you want me to? I'd be very happy if you would. Oh, but I don't think I will. Why not? Well, I might like it where you live and want to stay there and... It'd be splendid if you did, wouldn't it? Why would it? Well, well, we could have lots of fun together. Oh, I don't think we would. You probably live in some little old pokey town, and if I liked it and wanted to stay there, I... Might not get to know anybody. Nobody but you. And I might grow up to be 21 without ever getting really acquainted with any other boys. Yes, of course, our place is somewhat removed from town. Yes, and if I never got to know any other boys, I might... I might fall in love with you someday. And then what? Well, then... Well, uh, Well, we'd have to get married, I suppose. <sighs> oh, that'd be terrible, wouldn't it? No, I don't think so. I'm sure when I'm 21, I shall want to marry someone like you. But if you didn't... Oh, but I'm sure I should. Yeah, but if you didn't, well, that'd be terrible. Except that I won't go to England, and it wouldn't happen like that anyway, and... I guess it's best, isn't it? 
I don't think so. It would be nice if it could happen that way. I thought you might like to have this. It's called Great Women of the Theater. I think you'll like it. Oh, well, thank you, Roger. Thank you. I... I wish I had something to give you. Oh, Aunt Edie, look at the present Roger bought me. A present? Well, why did... Oh, you're going away. We hate to see you go, Roger. I'm rather sorry to go. I like it here, and everyone I've met has been nice. But you see, I haven't any money, and it takes a lot to start the pooker in the big race. There's nothing else for me to do, I suppose, but to go home. Well, if I had it, I'd lend it to you. I know you would. And Timmy would, too, if he knew that you needed it. I guess we all would if we had it. Thank you. If Timmy should come home, would you tell him I'd like to see him? Or if he's too busy to see me, would you say goodbye to him for me? Of course we will, Roger. You like Timmy, don't you? Of course. You know, I have a feeling maybe he'll be around to see you before you leave. Do you think so? Oh, I don't know. I, I said maybe. I hope so. Say, boy, I, uh, I want to ask you a question. Well, I ain't stopping you. Well, do you know Timmy Donovan? Well, what if I does? Well, if you do, I'd like to know if you've seen him around here lately. What if I have? Well, if you have, I'd like to know where I can find him. Well, what if you found him? Now, what if you took a jump in the lake? Hey. Do you hear me? I said, hey. Yeah, I heard you. What'd you do, take this bench for your summer home? No, well, what if I did? No sass now. You've been here three hours. That's long enough for one watch. On your way. Don't you let me alone. I ain't done nothing, have I? Maybe you have. How do I know? What's your name? Fish. Fish, huh? Where do you live? In the aquarium. What do you have, boy? Egg sandwich and a cup of java. Green's very good. Oh, uh, maggot beans and heavy on the pork. Oh. Mm, I don't think I can eat any more. I've had four plates of those things already. I've been waiting here for three hours. For what? For you. Well, if Ma sent you here come looking for me, you can tell her I ain't coming back. She didn't send me. Nobody did. I came here to get some beans. I like beans, don't you? Yeah. Only while I've been sitting here, I've been thinking. What would you think of a guy who'd run out on a friend when he really needed him? Hmm, what guy are you talking about? And supposing this friend was in trouble now. And this guy could help him maybe if he tried. Only he wouldn't try. What would you think of a fellow like that, Timmy? Oh, I'd think he was a heel. Why? And what are you trying to pull? Roger needs money, Timmy. Badly. Oh, don't give me that. He's got all kinds of dough. Yeah, but he hasn't. He hasn't got anything. Not even enough to enter the Pulka in the American Cup. And they're going to have to sell him. Sell him? Why, gee, they can't do that. What would his honor think of that? Well, if they sold him, I wouldn't be able to ride him. And what chance would I have to square myself? Well, they can't do that. Well, they wouldn't have to if, you, if we had the money. Oh, where's a guy going to get that kind of dough? Yeah, it is an awful lot, isn't it? Well, I forgot to ask you, Timmy. How's your father? Who cares? Hey! 
Where's he going? Bye-bye. Well, you wouldn't want these here beans now, would you? Oh, don't be silly. Listen to this. The death of Sir Peter Calverton has forced his grandson to dispose of the puka favorite for the American Cup honors. But say, boss, suppose someone beats us to it and gets a horse. Don't worry about that. We'll get the puka, all right. That Calverton kid and his trainer will be duck soup for duck. Hello. Who? Timmy Donovan. It's the kid calling to see you. Okay, tell him to send him up. Send him right up. Go on, duck you guys. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. I want you to take this with you. There you go, beat it. Come in. Oh, hello, Timmy. Glad to see you. Hello, how are you? I'm okay. The doc pulled me through without an iron lung. I guess I owe you my life, kid. Oh, I'm glad to see you getting better. Uh, Dad, I, uh, I need some dough. Huh? Money? Yeah, I, I let you have it when you needed it, didn't I? Oh, sure you did, Timmy, well, I but... I gotta have it now. Uh, you ain't got rid of that five grand already, have you? No, no, not all of it. And I'd be glad to let you have some, Timmy. I, uh, uh hand me my coat there, will you? But don't you think you, you ought to tell me what you want it for? Well, I, I pulled a race to help you out. And, and on account of that, a swell guy died. Sir Peter. Yeah. That was a shame, wasn't it? A rotten shame. If I'd known that was going to happen, I'd never let you do it. Well, it's over with and I'd done it. But now I'm going to do something to fix it up. You can help me out. Sure, Timmy, sure. Uh, how much did you want? Grand, I'm going to give it to the kid so he can enter his horse in the race. I'm going to ride him and he's going to win the cup. That ought to square things, don't you think? Yeah, sure, sure, Timmy. But, uh, but, uh, Grand, that, that's a lot of dough. I, I ain't got that. That sawbones cost a lot of money coming from Chicago and all that. I could let you have, say, uh, say a hundred dollars. So how would that do? I wouldn't do it all. I gotta have a grand, do you hear me? I gotta have it. Yes, sure, sure, Timmy, but listen, maybe you won't need it. Didn't I read something about the kid selling the horse? Well, he wouldn't sell him if he had the entrance fee. Well, maybe it'd be a good thing if he did. Maybe it'd be a good thing if he didn't enter the horse at all. Why would it? Oh. Oh, I got it now. So you, you and your buddies can have another cinch heat, huh? Another boat race. Well, there ain't gonna be any more. The puka's gonna win, and you're gonna give me the dough. Oh, no, I ain't, Timmy. Oh, you ain't, huh? Hey, come back here, you little rock. You... Wait a minute. Let him go. Let him have the dough. Let him enter the race. That'll be just swell. I don't think it's a fair offer. You don't? No. Even if the Pooker only runs third tomorrow, he'll win $5,000, so you'd have him for nothing. <laughs> what if he runs out of the money? He did the last time. He'll do better this time. Maybe yes and maybe no. Mr. Godfrey, I think I'd better wait until the auction this afternoon. Someone may make a better offer. You know what happens at an auction? The guys agree among themselves beforehand that the top offer will be 5000 bucks. Then they make a deal among themselves later. Well, I don't know. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make it 7500 on the chance. You're trying to take advantage of a lad what's in trouble. I wouldn't think of doing such a thing. Uh, you hear that, Master Roger? He wouldn't take advantage of you. <laughs> well, 7500 is as high as I can go. But I'll make you a proposition. I'll throw in 10% of the pookas taking the race. Ah, oh, there, Master Roger. You promise to run the horse in the race? Of course I will. My, my word of honor. <laughs> Would it be all right if the puka ran under my grandfather's colors tomorrow? No, that's no good to me. Why not? The money arrangement will be the same. All I want is for those colors to cross the finishing line first. Just let the puka run under my colors and let me give the instructions to the jockey. That's all I ask. Listen, young man, 7510%. Take it or leave it. Master Roger, it might be better to wait for the auction. Yes, I think perhaps it would. But it's all right if that's the way you want it. But I warn you, you'll take a licking. The best they'll give you will be five grand, and I've offered you seventy-five hundred. Mr. Godfrey? Uh, yeah, yes? Would, would you lend me a thousand dollars until tomorrow? 
I'm sure my horse will win, and I'd be glad to pay you a handsome bonus for it. What do you think I am, a sucker? Listen, you've got a fair offer, yes or no? Well, I suppose... Here. Now, you fill in the amount up there, and then you sign down here. Come on, kid, I got no Please time. Please don't call me kid. All right, all right, your majesty. Sign. Roger, I got a thousand bucks. We're all set. A thousand dollars. Jimmy, I've changed my mind, Mr. Godfrey. The poker isn't for sale. Hey, you can't do that. You can go to jail for backing out on a deal like that. Yeah, and you can go to jail for making believe you're a doctor, too. A doctor? Yeah, I'll tell you all about it later. You little roughneck, you know what you've done? You've created a deal for your own father. Good old doc. So he was gonna buy a horse for my old man, huh? He was gonna use it instead of the iron lung. You wise kid, ain't you, huh? I'm wise enough to know when I've been played for a sap, and I know how to get over it, too. Here, take the money, Roger. You tell the old man I owe him a grand, see? And if he wants to get even, tell him to get himself a bet on the puka in the cup tomorrow to win. That's good advice, too. Ah! Doc. Hey, Doc! Take that to him, and this, too. With our compliments. Why, you little... You wait! <laughs> okay, tomato? Okay, pal. <laughs> <laughs> This is an historic day in the annals of American racing, ladies and gentlemen. And as the moment approaches when this band of magnificent horse flesh will go to the post, the question arises, will the great invader, the Puka, England's super horse, justify the many extravagant claims made for him? Now listen, kid, no mistakes, you understand? You gotta win this race. And we ain't particularly interested in how you do it so long as it's done. Well, I'm gonna do my best, ain't I? You gotta do better than that, son. What's the matter, you getting nervous? No, oh, that ain't it. It's just that English horse with Timmy up that keeps it from being a cinch. If the puka wasn't in the race, how would it look to you then? Eh, yeah, what's the use of pipe dreams? I'm asking you a question. Well, with the puka out, I could take that heat on hop, skip, and a gallop. Then you're home, kid. Who? Timmy Donovan? I'll tell him. Donovan? Huh? Report to the judge's stand right away. Me? Why? Maybe they want to get a slant at you before the race so they can tell what you look like before you're too far behind. Fingers crossed, keep your fingers crossed. My spirit control says all will be well. <laughs> Mr. Calverton, you wanted in the judge's stand. Me? Yes, sir, it's very important. When you see Timmy, tell him I'll be right back. All right, oh. <laughs> Timmy, why are you here? Your friend just gave us a very interesting little statement about the Ridgemore handicap. I don't understand, sir. Oh, it's very simple. He just threw the race. Through the race? That's not true, sir. He's given us a story. He was well paid for it by his father. Did, did Timmy say that? Did you, Timmy? Yes, I did. It's true. Well, if he did, it was only because he thought his father was dying. It was to save his life. We're not interested in why it was done, Mr. Calverton. What we're interested in is how much you knew about it. Ah, he didn't have anything to do with it. One moment. It's true that your grandfather died insolvent. He left you nothing but the horse, the puka, and no cash money, is that right? Yes, sir. Then where did you get the thousand dollars to enter your horse in the American Cup? Why, I... Did you get it from someone who might have had a great deal at stake, such as a professional gambler? No, sir. Well, then where did you get it? I... I gave it to him. That's what I did with the money I got from my old man for pulling his horse. That don't mean he knew anything about it, does it? No, I didn't, sir. And I can't believe these things about Timmy, either. What Timmy has done will cost him his career. He'll be ruled off the turf for the rest of his life. But we don't want to be unjust to you as owner of the horse if you're not implicated. I tell you, he had nothing to do with it. I double-crossed him. I let him down. My old man framed it and I did it. You can't rule him off for that. Get Higgins. Higgins! See Donovan at the front gate. And remember, he's not to be seen anywhere on this course until after the jockey club is acted. Yes, sir. Listen, I don't care what you do to me. 
I did wrong and I know it. I'm taking what you hand me. But you can't do nothing to him. He didn't do nothing wrong. Honest, he didn't. The only thing he's got in the world is that horse. And if you take away his one chance and you don't let him run, it ain't fair to him. Honest, it ain't. You gotta let him race. Come on, Donovan. Jimmy! Mr. Coward, just a minute. I should say all is well. The name of our alma mater is Hopskin. Yay, hey boy. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a special announcement. The puka has been scratched, and Timmy Donovan has been set down by the stewards. There's something fishy here. You see what I see? What? That's Donovan over there, Timmy's father. Well, isn't he supposed to be sick or something? You're right, sick or something. It's more than something. Now, you stay right here and don't move till I come back. I've got some work to do. Where do you think you're going? I'll send you a telegram about it in the morning. Uh, Hopskid is the hide. Now, you phone Mac. Tell him to get word to the mob to set it in, lay it on, and never stop. I'll slip in one grand here before the flag falls. Tell him to shake that tree. The apples are ripe. $1,000, 10 tickets to win on hop skit, number four. Next, please. Come on, little girl, what is it? Oh, uh, have you got change for a quarter? Have I got change for a what? Uh, oh, I beg your pardon. Next, please. Three tickets on number four. Well, where's Mr. Calverton? Where's Roger? Where's everybody? They took Master Roger to the judges stand. Now, let us get this all straight. Aunt Edie, Mr. Donovan just spent a lot of money on Hopskid. I was standing right by the betting booth, and I saw him do it, and the other man with him went away, and they both... I the knew there was something rotten around here. I've been smelling it all afternoon. Right. Not you, not you. Oh, thank you. Roger, come here, darling. Tell me everything that's happened. Tell me everything you know. I've got a hunch that I'm going to start throwing things in any minute. Come, my lad. What have these blooming savages been doing to us this time? Oh, nothing much. They've ruled Timmy off the turf. It was something irregular that they said he did. I'm sure he didn't do it, and I'm sure that if he did, why, why, he just couldn't help it. But they can't. They can't do it. They can't do it, you blithering idiot. They've done it. It's going to be rather hard, isn't it, Puga, to, to keep our chins up? Well, another day, another race. There's no such thing as another race, son. Is this one or none? No one can ride the Puga over here but Timmy. Oh, Timmy isn't the only jockey in the world. Why don't you ride him, Roger? You can't do that. They got racing rules to cover such things. Racing rules, my necktie. I learned my ABCs from the Book of Rules. Experts make them and experts break them, and I'm an expert. Come on, son. We've got a lot of business to do. First it's one thing and then another. How I stand up under it, I don't know. We have just received word from the steward stand that the famous British runner, the Puka, has been reinstated. And here is news that is news. Young Calverton, the owner of this English thoroughbred, has qualified and will ride his own horse. When the horses reach the post, I will turn the microphone over to Lem McCall, who will describe to you hey, the Timmy. actual running of this wonderful race. Hello, Timmy. Tough luck, kid. Yeah, I guess so. Sorry to see you in such a mess, Timmy. It's probably just a big mistake. They'll fix it. A mistake? You can't fix a mistake like that. Not when you've thrown down your best pal. The only guy that ever went to bat for you. When they take his horse out of the race because of me, of what I'd done. That's just a mistake, huh? Son, I've got a bit of news for you. The Puka's running. The Puka's running? Re-entered a few minutes ago, and who do you think's riding him? Your pal, your buddy. You mean that little fellow? Sure, young Calvin, riding him himself. Roger! Well, ain't that what I'm telling you? Listen, Sergeant, you've got to help me. I've got to see that race. Well, I couldn't take you back to the track, Timmy. It would cost me my job. No, I don't mean that. Let me climb that tree. It won't hurt nobody. I just got to see the race. Don't you know we got strict orders about things like that, especially about climbing trees? If we see anybody climbing a tree close to the track, we got to yank them right down. If we see anybody. Uh, who are you betting on? 
the Puka number nine. Ten bucks, right on the Schnazola. Oh, but he can't win. My husband says so. What is your husband, a fortune teller? Well, with Donovan set down, we like hot skits. Sister, you can have him. And your husband. The Puka to win, please. Thank you. Hey, listen, kid, I got something to tell you before we start. If you want to stay in one piece, why, well, stay away from me. That's all I got to tell you. I should like very much to stay in one piece, as you put it, Mr. Reed, and shall keep away from you. Would uh, six lengths in front be far enough? Ah, uh, don't make me laugh. <laughs> Ark at him. <laughs> well, Master Roger, all I can say is, I feel as Sir Peter standing here with us now, saying all the things to you that I'd like to be saying. How proud he is of you, and how he can see you bearing the Calverton name and the Calverton colors in his honor. God bless you. And all I can say, Mr. Wilkins, is, I'll try. I'll try very hard. Here I go. Here we are. Good luck. Well, we got down in Chicago, Boston, and St. Louis. St. Louis? Yeah. And how are you? Oh, we... hello, Mr. Donovan. I beg your pardon? There must be some mistake. That's what I thought, too. Figured you'd be too sick to get here. My, but you staged a mighty quick recovery, didn't you, Mr. Donovan? Just like a lizard. Rip his tail off and he's up and around the next day. By the way, did you hear what happened to Timmy? Some cheap, lying, filthy crook framed him off the track. Surprised? Oh, I bet you feel awful. Take a tip from me, Mr. Donovan. Bet on Hopskit. Come on, darling. That's telling you, May. The horses are on the track and will parade to the starting gate at the head of the stretch. You gotta win, Roger. You gotta. For me. That is number nine, the pook out of the parade line. He's not out of control, just as usual, warming up. Hey, Roger, it's me, Timmy. Timmy! I gotta talk fast, so get this. They might yank me down out of here any minute. It's about the race. I wanna tell you what to do, how to fool them. But I know. I'll do just as you were going to do. You gotta forget about that. None of that coming from behind stuff. But that's the only way we can win. You're crazy. Do you think they're gonna let you come through on the turn? They'll gang up on you. Do you understand? And give me the squeeze. Yes, I understand. Well, listen, you'll be laying out in the middle of that track with a broken neck. You've gotta take him to the front and keep him there. Are you set? Yes, I think so. Well, all right, go out there and give it to him. Show him how it's done. The horses are being led into the starting gate. Handle him gently, please. Pipe down, kid. I'll get him up to the starting gate. And you'll handle him gently, or I'll crack you across the knuckles with my crop. You little rat, I'll... Drag you off that seat. I'm sorry, but you'll have to leave this horse into this stall as he should be led. Come on, boys. I can't stand here all day. We gotta get him started. Back there, Calverton. Get him up there, Reed. Hey, Wells, look away. I'll see if you can't find some kind of a line there. Back to you. Come on. Look alive. On your toes. <laughs> race that counts, Cricket. The Puka we shuffle to the end. Come on, Reed. Come on. Come on. On the first turn, it's Fiddler holding the lead by a link. Easy, old chap. Easy. Come on, now, let's get up there. Charging to the heels of the leaders and might get through. 
but it's up here to the side, spreading to the lead, racing close together, and the Puka looks cut out behind him, he's trying to get to in the tight jam among the three front Give me racing room, please. Rogers are laying for you. Look out! Look out! I'm coming through. This way. Look out! Look out! That's what I told you. Go down. They'll murder you. Oh, Didi, they'll hurt him. They'll hurt him. Oh, you got your bill. Look out, you little watch him. Please stop annoying me. Annoying you? Why, you lying, thieving, black-hearted old goon? I'll have you arrested if you don't get along. You'll have me arrested. Officer! Officer! Police! Hey, police! Police! What police! What's the trouble here? That man threatened me. He stole my pocket. Oh, this is an outrage. This woman's trying to frame me, officer. Yeah? Well, we'll soon find out. What's this? Oh, stealing purses from all women, eh? Well, you can just tell that to the judge. Now, wait a minute, now. Come on. I'm just talking. I'm going to talk this thing. Hey, what is this? Come on. I'm going to talk this thing. Thank you. Hold right there, please. Let's get back. Thank you. Hold that pose, please. Don't give me, boy. I knew you'd do it. Roger, some kid, eh? <laughs> okay, Tomato. Is that you okay, Timmy? You say those numbers on top, don't you? Did you see? I came from behind like you did. But I told you to get out in front and stay there. They might have got you. But they didn't. And we're out in front for sure now, aren't we? I'll say we are, pal. We're gonna stay there, too. You bet we are. Got a pair of new shoes. All the stuff you paid for. Honey, they were made for. Going to town. They did it all for. Got a pair of new shoes. Ciao! 